Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Layers panel in Adobe Illustrator. First, we'll find out how layers work, and then I'm going to show you how to organize your projects and your illustrations, like the one here on my artboard, into those layers. Now, when you open up a new document in Illustrator and you go to the Layers panel, you're going to find only one empty layer. That's because there's nothing on the artboard. But as soon as you begin to add either an object or text, Illustrator is going to stack those objects into the active layer in the Layers panel. And there's a hierarchy to how these will appear on your artboard. Any object that is on top of another object in the Layers stack is going to be in front of that object on the artboard. But they don't have to stay there. Any object can be moved anywhere in the stack, and you're going to find out in this video just how easy that is, especially if you organize your illustrations and your projects into layers from the very beginning. Well, if you're going to organize your objects into layers, you're going to need more than layer one, and I'll show you four different ways to add layers. Each one is going to add the layer a little differently. The first way is to use the icon at the bottom of the Layers panel, which is a square with a plus sign in it. I'll click here, and Illustrator adds a new layer on top of Layer 1, which was selected. I'm going to double click on this text and rename this bottom icon, and that way we can keep track of which layer was added by which method. For the next method, I'm going to select Layer 1 again, and then come up to this little icon at the top of the Layers panel. It's these three horizontal lines. I'll click here and choose New Layer. Again, Illustrator adds a new layer on top of the layer that was selected, but it also opens up the Layer Options dialog box. Here I'm able to change the name of the layer, and so I'm going to name this upper icon and I can also change the color that's assigned to it. We'll just leave it green, and I'll say OK. So with both the bottom and the top icons, Illustrator adds the new layer on top of the layer that is selected. I'm going to choose Layer 1 again. This time, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command-L. And when I do, Illustrator adds a new layer, not above the layer that was selected, but all the way up to the top of the stack. I'll double click here, and I'm going to rename this Command-L, and just press Enter. And now that name is changed to Command-L. Now there's one more way to add a new layer, and this is another keyboard shortcut. I'm going to leave the Command-L layer selected, and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command-Option-L. And when I use that keyboard shortcut, Illustrator places the new layer underneath the selected layer, and it opens the Layer Options dialog box as well. So we'll change the name here to Command-Option. L, and I'll say OK. So these are the four ways that you can add layers. That's a lot to remember. Most of the time, I just use Command L, and then I'll drag the layer wherever I want it to go. While I'm talking about adding layers, I want to show you the other icon at the bottom of the Layers panel, which will add a sub-layer. Now You must have a layer selected, and then come down and press the little icon, Create New Sub-Layer and it will add a new sublayer inside the layer. You're going to see how we use these sublayers as we move along in the video. But right now I don't want this sublayer, so I'm going to go to the bottom of the layers panel and click on the trash can and that's going to delete it. Now we're going to come look at the illustration from one of my children's books, and this version isn't organized into layers. There is one layer, and there are 378 different objects. And I'll scroll down and show you just how many that really is when you look at each individual piece. And if I need to find something to edit it or to move it in front or behind of an object, I could look for a good little while and waste a lot of time. Now let's move to a different version of this illustration, which is organized into layers. And right away, you can see that there's a big difference in the Layers panel. I have eight layers, and all of my objects are organized based on how they fit together 
in those different layers. Now let's look at the columns in the layers panel and see what each of these do. The first column with the eyeballs is the show hide column. I'm going to twirl open the black crow layer and I'll click on the eyeball next to the crow's body. On the artboard, the body is hidden, but it's not gone. It's still in the layers panel, and all I have to do is click on the eyeball to bring it back. I can hide as many objects as I want. I can bring them back, and I can hide the entire black crow layer by going up to the top of the layer and clicking on the eyeball. Now the black crow is completely hidden on the artboard until I click the eyeball again. Perhaps you want to work just on the black crow layer and for the moment hide everything else. All you have to do is hold down the option key when you click on the eyeball next to the black crow layer and everything else is hidden on the artboard and you can work just on the black crow. Then when you're ready to bring everything back, hold down the option key and click on that layer eyeball again. Sometimes I like to work in the outline mode because I can see all the different objects, even the ones that are hidden. If you don't want to move the entire project into outline mode, you can press the command key and click on the eyeball next to the layer and it moves the layer into the outline mode and you can work on it there and then when you're ready to bring it back into the preview mode, hold down the command key again and press on the eyeball. Now it's back to full color. Well, maybe you want everything except the crow to be in outline mode. In that case, you hold down both the command and the option keys and click on the eyeball next to the layer and everything else on the artboard is in the outline mode except for the layer that was selected. When you're finished, hold down the command and option keys and click on the eyeball of any layer and that brings all of the layers back into full preview mode. The next column is the lock and unlock column. If you want to lock a particular object so that it doesn't move when you're working on objects around it, just click in this little space and you'll get a padlock and you're not able to select or change or move that particular object until you unlock it. You can lock a number of objects at the same time. You can unlock them and you can lock the entire layer by clicking at the top of the layer and now all of the objects in the black crow layer are locked and I can't do anything with any of them until I unlock that layer. I'm going to collapse the black crow layer and we're going to look at the color path bars. Illustrator gives each layer a different color and then when you twirl down and expand the layer you'll see that every sub layer and object inside that layer is also assigned the same color. Now I see those colors on the artboard when I select the objects. When I target the scarecrow head, this same color is going to be the path around my selection. And I can also see this little square showing me that the face is selected and it's the same color. If I click on the rabbit layer, I'm going to have a green path. If I click on the crow layer, I'm going to have a black path. If I want to change the layer color, all I have to do is double click on the layers thumbnail and that brings up the layer options dialog box and I can twirl down on the color and choose any color that I want. I'm going to choose yellow and say OK. And Illustrator has changed the color path bar to yellow. I want you to notice that it didn't change the color path bars of the sub layers and the objects that are in the scarecrow, but when I select them, they're still going to show up as the changed color. I'll collapse the scarecrow layer now. And we'll look at the wide column, which is the thumbnail and the description column. Right now, all of the carrots are pointing to the thumbnails on each of the layers, and that means that the layer is collapsed. To expand a layer, all I need to do is click on this little carrot, and everything inside the layer is then revealed. If there's another carrot next to a thumbnail inside the layers panel, that means this is a sublayer. And if I click on the carrot, it expands the sublayer, and I see that there are individual objects within the sublayer. 
Now the sublayer thumbnail is going to give me a picture of what these objects look like on the artboard. In this case, I have the eye of the crow. And if I make any changes to these objects, either in the layers panel or on the artboard, it's going to reflect in the thumbnail. So watch the crow's eye. I'm going to hide the pupil. And when I do, you can see that the sublayers thumbnail also changed because it's going to reflect what we see on the artboard. I'm going to go ahead and we'll bring that pupil back and I'll collapse the sublayer. Now the layers thumbnail works the same way. It gives us a picture of all of the sublayers and the individual objects. So if any of these change on the artboard, it's going to be reflected in this thumbnail. So let's take the crow's beak and I'm going to just move it over here to the top left corner of the artboard and that drastically changes the thumbnail because Illustrator shows us a picture of where the objects are in relation to each other. It's just really hard to see now because the crow is so small. Now if I want to make my thumbnail larger all I have to do is come up to this top icon click here and come down and choose panel options. This opens up the layer panel options dialog box. I don't recommend ever clicking on show layers only because that limits your access to your sub layers and your objects and you're not going to be able to even get to those. And that's really defeating the purpose of using the layers panel. Below that is row size, and this is where you can change the size of your thumbnails. I've already enlarged the thumbnails to 40 pixels so that they're easier for you to see in this video, but I can actually make them as large as I want. I'll change this to 70 so you can see how this works. I'm not going to change anything else here and just click OK. And you can see that these thumbnails are quite a bit larger. And now you can see this crow and you can see where the beak is. And and if I undo the move, keyboard shortcut command Z, the beak is back on the crow and you can see that the thumbnail reflects that move. Well, the thumbnails are big, but I can't see the description anymore. If I wanted to, I could hover next to the left side of the layers panel and you can see my cursor with the double arrows. I could press down and drag over and make my layers panel wider, but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to come back and change the panel options to 40 again and say OK, and that's going to give me plenty of room and I can see most of these descriptions. I like to label most of my objects, especially the ones where they're very similar so that I'm not having to guess which one is which. And you've seen how easy it is to make those changes. I'll just double click on the text here and rename this crow and press the enter key and just like that I've changed the description. This last column is the target column and if I want to target the eye on the crow I'll click on the ball next to the thumbnail and now I can work on the eye. I can target an entire sub layer or I can expand the layer and I can target one specific piece of the layer. And you can see on the artboard, the hair of the crow is moving up and down as I use my up and down arrow keys. When you isolate objects in the layers panel, it makes it so much easier to edit them. I'll collapse this sub layer here. Now let's review the stacking order for the layers. Any object or sub layer that is on top of another object or sub layer in the layers panel is going to be in front of that same object or group of objects on the artboard. In this instance, we have the beak, which is stacked on top of that body in the layers panel. So when we look at the illustration, we see that that same beak is in front of the crow body. But watch what happens here. If I click on the beak and hold my mouse down and drag the beak down underneath the body, it's under the body in the layers panel and it is behind the body in the illustration. I can make all sorts of changes with my illustration just by moving the different objects up and down in the stack. In this case, I didn't get the result that I wanted, so I'm going to undo that move. Keyboard shortcut, Command Z. 
I'll collapse the crow layer and I'm looking at the fence in my illustration and I'm thinking that it might look better if the base of that was behind the grass. I know that the fence is in the background layer but there are a lot of different objects there and the fastest way for me to get to the fence is to select it and come down to this little magnifying glass on the bottom of the layers panel, which is the locate object icon. And when I click here, Illustrator not only opens up the background layer, but it also brings me right to the fence layer so I don't have to dig around to find it. I'll collapse the fence layer because I want to select the entire fence. I'll select it, hold my mouse down, and drag it underneath the grass layer and click on the artboard and you can see it's exactly where I want it. Now, if you remember when we add an object it goes to the top of the stack in the layer that is selected. Right now the background layer is selected. You can see this little triangle in the top right corner. I can also click on the layer to select it. And then I'm going to get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and I'll drag a rectangle out on the artboard. Now Illustrator placed that rectangle at the top of the stack. So it's on top of all of the objects that are in that layer. But the entire background layer is underneath the scarecrow layer and the rabbit layer and the carrot sign layer and the crow layer. So the rectangle is behind all of those objects on the artboard. If I move that rectangle to the crow layer, I'm going to drag it and drop it on top of the crow layer and we'll twirl it open. You can see Illustrator placed it at the top of the stack so it's even on top of all of the other objects in the crow layer. So on the artboard it's in front of the crow and it's also in front of the sign and the rabbit and the scarecrow and the background layer. Now we certainly don't want that so I'm just going to press the delete key and get rid of that. So now you see you can move objects within layers or you can move objects to other layers. I'll collapse our background layer and collapse the crow layer and I'll select the background layer. Right now the background layer is at the bottom of the stack of all of the layers in the layers panel and so it's behind all those objects and we see every one of them. But if I grab hold of this entire layer and I drag it to the top of the layers panel, it is now the top of the stack and all of the objects are underneath it in the layers panel and behind it on the artboard. And that is definitely not what we wanted, so I'm going to undo that, keyboard shortcut, command Z. And that background layer is back where it belongs. Well, I think you can see if you just understand the hierarchy of these layers and you realize something's in the wrong place, it's pretty easy to isolate it and move it where it needs to go. You can move objects anywhere in the layers panel. I'm going to target this carrot which you see on the left side of the artboard. I want you to see in this last example how moving objects can sometimes cause new issues which you need to be on the lookout for. I'll grab the carrot and I'm going to drag it all the way up to the top of the stack in this layer and as I look at it on the artboard now I've created a problem. I've got it in front of the mound and it doesn't look like the other carrots. So I'm going to have to undo that move, keyboard shortcut, command Z. So just make sure that when you move an object or when you move a layer that you're not creating another problem by putting it in front or behind of an object that messes up your drawing. There's not a right or a wrong way to organize your projects into layers. You just need to stack your objects into layers that make sense to you so that when you need them, you can find them. I always start with the background layer. If I'm going to do an outside scene, the sky comes first and then the clouds and the background greenery, anything that's not going to interact with my characters. Next, I add a new layer for every character or every object that I place on the artboard in front of that background layer. As I build on these characters or build on these objects, the layer that they're in is selected so all of the pieces go into that layer. 
Then if there are certain objects that just naturally go together, I'll group them and create sublayers so that my stack is shorter. I'm going to twirl down on the rabbit layer and show you what I mean. With this layer, I have all the pieces of the rabbit's face and his body, his hands, his feet. I could group all of the face together and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. I'm going to target the teeth there at the top of the stack of the rabbit's head and then hold down the shift key and I'll come all the way down to the ears and target the ears and because I had the shift key down Illustrator targets all of the rest of the objects that are in between the ones that I selected. Now I'm going to group these together with the keyboard shortcut Command G. And as I do that, you see that a sublayer has been created, which shows us the face and the ears of the rabbit. I'll hold down the shift key and target the two feet and group them, keyboard shortcut, Command G. And then I'll target the arms, holding the shift key down and group them, keyboard shortcut, Command G. Now my stack is shorter. I can see more of the layers panel, but more importantly, because of the thumbnail, I know exactly what is in each one of these sublayers. And that is all there is to it. Well, I hope that you've seen how easy it is to use the layers panel and how helpful it can be in organizing your projects. Before you go, I would love to hear from you. Leave me a comment or a question or even a thumbs up if you liked today's tutorial. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do that right now while you're thinking about it. It'll help me and it helps you not miss any of my future tutorials. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye now.